You know, some years ago, Mama used to ask me, Honey, all these preachers that preach about God will give you money, God will give you car, God will give you house. If you believe, shout him. Mama would say to me, Honey, what about multi billionaires? Will they listen to that preacher? I said, For what? They would tell him, Come, 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 stop shouting. What is it? That is why Jesus didn't come for things, He came to save sinners. Because the man has everything, but there's one thing he doesn't have the salvation of his soul. And that's because I will be the richest man on earth. Greed, covetousness. Messages that are materialistic, how to make it. Entrepreneur skills in the church. Messages that make you feel that if you don't have financial breakthrough, God is not happy with you. Messages that make you feel that the approval of God is that you joined this church just one month ago. Now you have a gym. Messages that inspire greed and covetousness. That's the doctrine of Bala. And it's in many churches. And believers are taught to give money. And that when they give money, they will prosper. It's fraud. Fraud of the highest order. Give so you can be rich. It's fraud. They are stealing from you. There is no such promise in the scripture. Any preacher who said, give me money, God will multiply it. He said, thief. Did you hear what I said? What is he? He said, thief. Quote me anywhere. The true worth of a minister is not the car he drives. The true value of a minister is his ability to communicate doctrine. Material accusation is not blessing. Even here on to where you called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example leaving us an example that you should follow his steps who did no sin neither was guile found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him that judged righteously who his own self bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed using the same example of Jesus to teach us Christian living so the cross there becomes what Jesus did for us and an example is in his kingdom so Jesus is the example of the kingdom that he founded he's the example of the kingdom that he founded this kingdom is not found on wealth it is found on sacrifice the kingdom of God is not found on wealth it is found on sacrifice Philippians chapter 3 verse 18 the church under persecution for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ that's why he called those who preach and mind earthly things enemies of the cross when a man of God is defined by his shoe his Rolex wristwatch his car all right his house and all the places he has been around the world those people defining that man of God with those things are enemies of the cross a preacher who thinks he's anointed because he has a mass world you know minds have been messed up minds have been messed up many men of God today want to be seen as celebrities we are not celebrities we are servants there's no celebrityness in servanthood we're not celebrities minds have been messed up I feel so strong for the upcoming generation the young ministers that are coming up who have 
decided to model after ministers that are materialistic i feel for them a lot of them are jumping into all kinds of things that are, are not nice to be pronounced from from this pulpit all in the name and in the guise of trying to fit into a mold that is an enemy of the cross in the name of ministry i know what i'm talking about brother paul said i warn you again even weeping that these guys are enemies of the cross they mind earthly things they are not interested in the preaching of the gospel they are only interested in making wealth using God using God to make wealth some of them will say they have an anointing that makes people make money they have an anointing that brings money what a disservice Jesus who is ministry personified Jesus who is God Jesus who gave us this kingdom never once said he has an anointing that attracts wealth Jesus never said it every Sunday there is entrepreneurial service is that the mission of the church and somebody said God has told me to raise millionaires Where, which verse which verse from except is a Bible I have not read I have not seen any verse in the Bible that say we should raise millionaires but I have seen a verse that say we should equip believers to do the work of ministry we are not here to raise millionaires we are here to raise believers we are here to raise an army for God that will preach the gospel of Christ an army that will preach the message of salvation because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation we are not here to raise millionaires we are not here to raise millionaires we are here to raise people that are christ-like people that are reflecting christ i've never seen a verse that says we should raise millionaires it's not in the bible and it is not what the apostles handed over to us no it's not it's not historical christianity and it's not apostolic teaching the raising of millionaires don't you want you to be millionaires you should be millionaires because if you have money we can do more but that's not our teaching in this church see i hear you but when a church focuses on materialistic gospel is the doctrine of balaam see i hear uh -huh. yet a man today who is not even a foundational apostle he is not even in the cadre of foundational apostles is bragging and claiming that his own anointing is to make people rich when even jesus the one who gave us the kingdom the messiah of mankind never ever boasted in such things how yes he will say are you following me I have nowhere to lay my head. The son of man has nowhere to lay his head. The birds have where to stay. I don't have. Because he never came to be ministered to. But to minister and give his life a ransom for many. So that's why Paul calls them the enemies of the cross. They mind earthly things. Enemies of the sufferings. They are enemies of of the denial that comes with the cross when you preach financial gain as the kingdom is an enmity of the message of the cross when you preach material gain as the kingdom i went somewhere to preach very vividly in my mind they brought one guy from america who said he came to teach on the prosperity of benjamin the prosperity of benjamin a bible conference where i am guest speaker you want to come and preach the prosperity of benjamin by the time i finished he didn't even remember where his notes were he didn't even remember where the notes were for him to even carry to, to even remember that he was there for benjamin 
Benjawat. By the time we dissected the scriptures and situated the conference, because I situated the conference since I was the, the first speaker, I marshaled out the framework of how the conference is going to go, and I created in the people an appetite for the raw word of God. Benjamin ran out. Benjawat. That's how we did the conference without Benjamin. Even him and his wife didn't know when they became inducted into the pure gospel. Benjamin what? When the glory of Jesus is revealed by the scriptures, nothing else stands in the way. So when you preach financial gain as the kingdom, it's an enmity of the message of the cross. That message says the poor became king. The message of the cross says the weak became strong. The message of the cross says the servant is the Lord. The message of the cross says the one who became nothing became the savior of the world. Jesus changes the entire way we reason it doesn't sound like human wisdom it doesn't how can a person who brought an entire kingdom say he's a servant it makes no sense a king of a kingdom says i will die it makes no sense not in the world which man's wisdom teacheth but that which the Holy Ghost teacheth. When somebody dies like a criminal and then is exalted to the highest place, it doesn't make sense. So that Jehovah of the Old Testament, the man they saw, it doesn't make sense. Abraham had seen it. Jehovah the Lamb. The Lamb the king is a lamb it doesn't make sense that's why john in his vision said behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sins of the world after a while john said go and ask him is he the real one or should we look for another because it doesn't make sense that you say you are a king who brought a kingdom and you're going to die by the people you are supposed to rule. <laughs> what kind of kingdom? It doesn't make sense. Then Jesus said to you the lowest form of persuasion to communicate to John. The lowest. You know miracles are the lowest form. So he opened blind eyes, made the lame to walk. He said, gentlemen, blind eyes see the lame walk. Go and tell John what you see and what you hear. The lowest form. He said, believe me for the very works. If you don't want to believe me for anything else, believe me for the very work's sake that I do. 